p.m. in Widikum in the northwest region of Cameroon. It is 8 p.m. here in Douala, and it's time for prime time news. We begin with the headlines. Detained militants of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement and the party president, Maurice Kamto, will still have a month to know what the Cameroon justice reserves for them. This was the outcome of the case that was brought before the Yaoundé military court this September 6, 2019. The hearing carried forward as will be brought to us in the news right ahead. The death has been announced of the former president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, who passed on in the early hours of this Friday morning. He died at the age of 95 and has been considered as the hero of his country for his 37 years in power. And in some societal news, Fridays within the working class in Cameroon has a certain characteristic. Why do people consider Friday as a relaxed workday is the center of a research our reporters went out today to collect from workers in the city of Douala. Details of these and more right ahead. Please, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the last edition of the Primetime News for this week. Today is Friday, the 6th of September, 2019, and my name is Mange Venasius. We begin the news with this news coming in from Yaoundé concerning the case pitting Maurice Kamto and his party militants and the people of Cameroon with the highly awaited court case uh, that took place this Friday in Yaoundé has been postponed to the month of October. Maurice Kamto and his party militants arrived at the Yaoundé military court that was highly militarized this morning. One of the detainees, Christian Penda Ekoka, fainted in the course of the hearing. Medical experts say he wasn't getting enough air in the courtroom, hence his malaise. This provoked the adjournment to the month of October. Details of this will be brought to you as they unfold in the month ahead. We remain in Yaoundé and this time we talk the installation ceremony of uh, the newly appointed officials of the Cameroon Feminine Football League that took place today. The installation ceremony was uh, presided over by the FECA Food President Seido Mbombo Njoya. Afesi Apong, a Yaoundé based correspondent, took, place, took part at the installation ceremony and now reports. They were appointed on Wednesday, September 4th, 2019 by a communique signed by FECA Foods President Sejum Bombonjoya and are charged with coordinating the activities of the Feminine Football League for a transitional period of two years. The installation of the committee, made up of five women and headed by Madame Céline Eko, marked a new beginning for women's football in the country. Today is um, a very historical, historical day because uh, one of our... Um, program uh, was uh, um, to, uh, to, to launch uh, uh, a feminine league in Cameroon. We have given the, the responsibility to some uh, women to take in charge their, their, their football. They will have to focus on the not only the promotion of their, of the, of their football, they will have to, to focus on the feminization of the administration of football and also of course the main focus, focus is the is the, um, the organization of the championship for women, women championship for under 15 and also the senior. One of the members, Madame Ufei Seke Anoma, says creating the Cameroon Feminine Football League is giving recognition to the achievements of the Cameroon women's football team at both continental and world level, though she is aware of the challenging tasks that await them. Cameroon is the first country in Africa and even out there to have a female league that is a league that's not attached to a male league. So Cameroon is the first and um, we have a lot of work to try and uh, put things in place and since it's the first time make sure that the young people who are coming after us will inherit uh, something solid and something that uh, we will be proud of. The tax may look difficult, but the newly installed are already strategizing on ways to making it easier. The immediate project would be to, to look at the championship, to organize. Are we going to play f uh, second division at the national level or regional level? Uh, how many teams are we going to have at um, the, uh, international, uh, the national level? We are lucky because the president just informed us that he has found some sponsors for us. So we are going to try and put things in place and make things better than they were before. 
The members therefore have a daunting task to make the Women's League in Cameroon more attractive, especially at a time when the Confederation of African Football is envisaging the creation of the female version of the CAF Champions League. The amended runs till September 3rd, 2021. And we leave a Yawunde. We go over to Kumba in the southwest region. The senior divisional officer for Meme Division, Ntuondong Chamberlain, was out on Thursday, 5th of September 2019, to reinforce the ongoing sealing of stores by the government delegate to the Kumba City Council. At the end of that outing, the SDO had the following message. Let's have the SDO in this excerpt uh, as prepared for us by Mituge Evelyn. The message is. Uh... One, I have just one message. They have to come and open their shops because we are tired. We are tired. They cannot continue to disgrace us like that. They have to feed their family. They have to go to the hospital. They have to send. If they don't send, the money is going to come from where? That's why let me see this opportunity. Like the father, the government gave them say now, he doing his work, they are saying, you the one who can open. But me, like the father, let me continue to highlight that they are supposed to open their shops in order to sell. If not, we are going to move forward. That's it. We hope that measures will be taken as the SDO indicates in that except. But after talking with journalists, the SDO proceeded and signed two communique. One that reads as follows. The communique begins. The senior divisional officer for Meme Division has noticed with dismay that since Monday, 2nd of September 2019, divisional delegates, service heads, as well as their collaborators have headed to the call for a lockdown by the secessionist groups. He therefore called on all to be present at their duty post from the 5th of September onward. Failure to be present will necessitate the sealing of the set office and disciplinary sanctions thereafter, signed by the Ntuondong Chamberlain, Senior Divisional Officer for Meme. Equally, after that, he passed on this other announcement. Due to the prevailing, and this second announcement, due to the prevailing security situation in Meme Division and Kumba in particular, the Senior Divisional Officer for Meme Division hereby informed the entire population of Kumba and its environs that all markets, commercial stores, filling stations, commercial bikes, taxi and interurban transport are hereby prohibited to operate on sec or circulate in Meme Division from Saturday the 7th of to Sunday the 8th of September 2019. This prohibition does not concern vehicles of administrative authorities, forces of law and other, ambulances, funerals, private vehicles and pharmacists. Normal activities will resume on Monday, 9th September 2019. Defaulters will face the law. The divisional officer and the head of defense and security forces are in charge with the implementation of these measures. This announcement has been signed by the senior divisional officer for Meme Ntuondong Chamberlain. And we leave uh, Kumba, we go over to the northwest region, precisely in Bamenda. And in Bamenda, for the past five days, the situation in Bamenda has not changed. Empty streets, shops closed, school gates remain closed, churches and all business premises have been dormant. Only ambulances and military cars seen on the streets. Gunshots have been frequent uh, this week in many neighborhoods. The town is expected to be open tomorrow, Saturday the 7th, and Sunday the 8th of September. Travel agencies will be able to go in and out of Bamenda during these two days. We have this information thanks to our Bamenda based correspondent, Do Stephen. We talk something at out of this. Some orphans of the military have received school items of books, school bags, and other didactic material. It was in a bit to encourage the children and their families to continue with the education of their children. Rail Ule Abia completes that story in this report. Back to school without worries is the theme of this ceremony that brought together orphans and some military personnel of Beto together. These are children of military men and women falling during a command mission. The children were offered bags and books and other didactic material so as to ease their back to school. The hierarchy should continue to educate 
after the death of their parents. That's the, the really symbolic. They are not they, they, those 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 child are not alone. They are they have a support of the entire government, especially the Ministry of Defense. The event took place at the explanade of the command post of the 8th Eastern Military Sector in Betwa. A gesture of generosity from the Supreme Commander of the Army, which is expected to comfort the beneficiaries. Handing over these school supplies plus financial support is a commitment made by the state and the responsibility for them not to let these children down. In receiving their gifts, the beneficiaries showed a sense of gratitude. Thanks, His Excellency Paul Bia, because we are the people of the nations and very happy of their gifts. In their word, they need these items. It is a way to encourage them to continue school and to keep the memories of their parents warm and alive. Like we heard in the lead stories, the people of Zimbabwe are bereaved following the death of their first post-colonial role president, Robert Mugabe, during the early hours of today in a hospital at Singapore. Who was Robert Mugabe and how are world leaders reacting to the death of this Zimbabwean former president is what Jaluboba tells us in this report. The former Zimbabwean leader Robert Mugabe has this Friday, September 5th, 2019, passed on to the world beyond to join his ancestors. The cold hands of death snatched his soul at a hospital in Singapore, far away from his hometown, at the age of 95. Mugabe has ruled Zimbabwe for almost 40 years. He was overthrown in a bloodless military coup in 2017. His supporters remembered him as a revolutionary hero who helped free Zimbabwe from colonialism and minority rule. His critics see him as a liberation hero turned a dictator. In 1980, he promised to build a new non-racial Zimbabwe which brought all races together. Mugabe, who suffered imprisonment and torture under the white minority rule in what was then Rhodesia, was the nation's first post-independence leader. While in jail, he was chosen as the president of the Zimbabwe African National Union, ZANU, of which he was the founding father. He liberated Zimbabwe from being a colony of Britain for about a century. Many world leaders have reacted to the death of Robert Mugabe. The U.S. Embassy in Harare has tilted their condolences to Mugabe's family and the people of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe current president remembered Mugabe as icon of liberation as he officially announced his death. The president of South Africa, Tanzania and Kenya say Mugabe was a great hero. And may his soul rest in peace. We come back to our country and this time we talk energy. The Minister of Water and Energy, Gaston Elundu Esomba, paid a working visit to yesterday to the Puma Hydroelectric Dam to take measures to ensure constant electricity supply throughout the country in the days ahead. The Vanessa complete that story in this report. The Cameroonian Minister of Water and Energy, Gaston Elundu Esomba, was on the field this September 5th in Puma, Division of the Sanaga Maritime, to evaluate the problem faced by the Songlulu Hydroelectric Power Plant in supplying energy to the major cities and localities surrounding the hydroelectric dam. I came here to launch a dialogue because this project must be realized in a participatory environment. It is for this reason that the governors of the two regions, Centre and South, are here. Even the directors of the different sectors are also present. During his exchange with the authorities of the division, such as the Director General of Hydromine, the Mayor of the Puma Municipality, Soman Francois, lasting solutions to the problems were devised. For five years, every other village in Puma has benefited energy supply except for one called Kana. The population can only be happy to see you here in Puma. The minister reassured the population that his presence is to see how they can reinforce the distribution, security and quality of electricity supply to the population. 
He later had a closed-door discussion with the village chiefs. The Minister of Water and Energy was accompanied by the Governor of the Centre Region, Nasiri Paul Beer. It is commonly said uh, two wrongs don't make a right. Yet the South African-born practice of xenophobia in Africa is being reproduced in a repressive number of days across the continent. In the following report, Cynthia Nguemo recounts the African bounce back to xenophobia in South Africa while revisiting some of the major retaliations, her report. Xenophobia, that was formerly known to be mostly a South African thing between the late 90s and 2015, is rapidly becoming an African syndrome. A recent xenophobia outbreak is occurring in South Africa, manifesting through discrimination, torture, murder and looting of foreigners in South Africa and their property. In response, other African countries like Nigeria, Kenya, Zambia and Zimbabwe, whose citizens are the most targeted in xenophobic attacks in South Africa, are firmly reacting to the inhumane treatment of their nationals, starting with their presidents. The presidents of Rwanda, Democratic Republic of Congo and Malawi are reported to have pulled out of the World Economic Forum Africa Summit in Cape Town this week in protest of xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Again, some African music artists like Tiwa Savage, Wizkid, Burner Boy and a host of others have cancelled their performances in the country still due to the widespread of xenophobia attacks. These measures, however, are the more rational ones as more extremist and revengeful actions are being carried out across Africa in retaliation. Demonstrators in other African countries are attacking and destroying South Africans, their businesses and administrative buildings in their countries like Nigeria, the DRC and Kenya just to name a few. Air Tanzania on its part has suspended flights to Johannesburg because of the violence. All the reactions from all over Africa, according to the perpetuators, is a bounce back for the ill treatment of their fellow nationals. The question is, how can two wrongs make a right? And how in the first place has the Rainbow Nation, known for welcoming and accepting everyone, become the same, spreading so much calamity in Africa? So for the return of peace and stability, other Africans have taken to the streets and social media platforms with placards and messages that read, amongst many, we want one Africa, we stand against xenophobia. We hope that promoters of this inhuman act would understand that, Cynthia. At 17 minutes past 8 p.m., you are watching the live broadcast of the primetime news here on DBS television. Fridays have been considered by most workers as a relaxed day. Reason for such a characteristic is what our reporter Wamba Tansi Mirabel went out this morning to find out from city dwellers why they consider Friday as a relaxed working day apart from the other four days. Her report. It's often common to see most workers in companies and enterprises dress in a more relaxed mood on Fridays, which is the last day of work in a week. Here in the economic capital, most workers and head of enterprises have advanced diverse reasons as to why Friday is often special. So everybody has to feel relaxed because the weekend is the time to, to relax, the time to, to, let's say, to rest a bit and then to enjoy. So while enjoying, while being relaxed, people are free in their mind to be more productive at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is good for us, it is good for the company, it's also good for the customer because when people are free, they are more productive. Away from this, Christian Boke, the CEO of NBS Company, says wearing T-shirt in his company on Friday is a way to advertise his company. Uh, with the company brands, okay, you are as if you're doing the adversity of your company, you are doing the ID. And uh, so somebody, some people doesn't, they don't know what is MBS about. So it's time for them to ask, I, I see you, Cape, what is MBS? You have to tell them because we are a B to B company, we are not a B to C company. He also added that for employers and employees to be on the same scale, they must look at like for a more relaxed atmosphere in order to achieve better results. The boss 
is with the t-shirt or the polo and there may be the driver as well so at the end of the day the image it is showing is that uh, when it comes to work okay the real boss is the company aside t-shirt other workers choose to put on free wears, jeans, face caps, amongst others, with the notion that it's weekend and they can chill out immediately after work with some friends or colleagues. Other workers say from Monday to Thursday, they are dressed in sophisticated wear, and it's but normal that on Friday they look different physically and mentally. To some others, it makes no difference dressing differently on Friday. Work is work to them, and the task for each day is the same. It's Friday and it's the start of weekend. Your outfit to work and back is a matter of choice. Enjoy and activate your Friday mood. Thank you, Wamba Tansi Murabel. We we'll enjoy and activate our Friday mood. We talk some religious news and tonight, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, who is on a trip to South Africa, began the first leg of his visit with a public mass in Mozambique today. A mass that was set for the progress of peoples in Maputo's Zimpeto Stadio was full of joy with songs and dances. He praised the country's new peace deal and called for unity. The pontiff also offered his solidarity to the victims of the two cyclones that, dev that, that devastated part of the country. The Pope's itinerary takes him next to the island nation of Madagascar, which is suffering from the effects of deforestation. From Madagascar, he will continue to Mauritius Island. Let us listen to some beautiful highlights of today's open AMAS in Mozambique in this excerpt. <laughs> And that is what makes the church one because our culture is also reflected in the church at 20 minutes past 8 p.m this is where we draw the curtain to this edition of uh, the prime time newscast do not go away the next newscast will be coming up at 9 p.m in the french language with luke serge didier nang for myself i will be back again from monday for what would have made news for a new week Activate your Friday mode, as we heard in this edition of the news. Keep watching programs here on DBS Television. Until Monday, have a blessed weekend. Goodbye.